sleep underneath it before you do this little flip thing. So now we're going to roll it up very, very gently. And then we're going to cut it to the size needle that we want. So I kind of want on the wide side. underneath it before you do this little flip thing. So now we're going to roll it up very, very gently. And then we're going to cut it to the size needle that we want. So I kind of want on the wide side. Hey everybody, today we're going to be making one of my favorite simple French dishes, which is coca vin. But I'm doing a twist on it, which is coca vin blanc. So coca vin just means chicken with wine, and the blanc part is white, so we're going to be using white wine. So if you have some white wine, some garlic, some onion, the basic staples around your house, this would be a great comforting recipe. Also, if you have like a Dutch oven, like a Le Creuset, now's the time to get that out. So if you're keto, you can still make this recipe. The only thing you need to do is just watch the onion, you know, try not to eat too many carbs this day. Um, like I told you, nobody ever got fat off an onion, so I kind of break the rules when it comes to onions and garlic. Mine. And also you're gonna have to substitute the flour. So right now I'm peeling half of a yellow onion and then we're gonna give it a nice medium chop. So I have my onion, I'm just gonna slice it crosswise and then go straight down. If you want to add more onion, be my guest. I don't think that would hurt, but half an onion should suffice for this recipe. So I have three gigantic elephant-sized garlic cloves. They're huge, but that's okay. It's going to be awesome. And I'm just using my garlic press, and I'm going to press them into my little ramekin over here. Put it on the side. I'm going to cut up some bacon, and then I'm good with the prep. So the last thing you need to chop up is your bacon. So you get three slices of bacon. And what I like to do is I like to roll it up. And then to me, it's easier to just slice it that way. And then you can mince the rest later. So you kind of want like bite sized pieces. So now that I have my bacon minced up, um, I took my chicken thighs out. I'm going to blot them in a paper towel because you want to get rid of all the excess moisture because that's going to make them steam instead of get that nice crispy skin. So once they're blotted, we're going to salt and pepper. Keep it pretty simple. I don't have an amount. Just use your judgment, whatever judgment that might be. And we're going to throw them in our pan. So I've been preheating my Dutch oven at medium heat, maybe medium to high. And now we're going to put in two tablespoons of butter and then we're going to sear in our chicken. Now that it's preheated, I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. Okay, that delicious sizzle. And then once that's melted, as you see, it's nice and brown. Then I'm going to add my chicken. Okay, now I'm going to put the chicken skin side down. I'm using chicken thighs. You can use chicken legs, but you really want that skin. That's the key. I'm going to let that sear for about three minutes. So I seasoned the other side with salt and pepper, and now I'm going to give these a flip. Oh yeah, look at that golden brown deliciousness. And we're going to cook it for another three, depending on the size. And you're not cooking the chicken all the way through here. You just want to get it nice and crispy in the exterior because we're going to braise it later, which is going to give it like a nice soft and moist texture. So it's been about another four minutes. So I'm going to take my chicken out. I'm going to put it on a platter and put it on the side. It looks great. It smells great already. And it's going to seem counterintuitive, but we're going to want to take out some of the 
because we're gonna cook bacon and bacon's fatty as it is. So we're gonna remove some of the fat. So if you've never used your Dutch oven or enameled cast iron, you're gonna freak out and be like, oh my God, I burned my pot. This brown stuff is called fond and that is flavor, my friend. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I'm just gonna take these paper towels and I'm going to just take the excess oil out and then I'm going to add my bacon. Now we're about to add the bacon. Cook until it's crispy. It's gonna smell so good. Excited. Make sure you stir it around and make sure it doesn't burn. So I'm stirring the bacon around and that fond I was talking about, I'm just scraping it with my spoon because while there's some oil in there, it'll be easier to loosen up. And also, when we add liquid later, it's gonna deglaze the pan, which will get this fond into the sauce. Fond is super, super flavorful, but if you can scrape it now, it'll make your life easier. As you can see, the bacon is crisping up very nicely. You don't want it to burn. And also, make sure you're using a wooden tool, if you're, especially if you're using enamel cast iron, because metal will ruin this beautiful surface, and you don't wanna do that. So use a wooden tool, plastic. All right. So now that the bacon is pretty much done its job, I'm going to add mushrooms, onions, and garlic. So first thing I'm gonna do is add my onion, and then I'm gonna add my mushroom. Now I saved the garlic for the end because the garlic needs too much time. So we're gonna give those a stir. One of the best smells is onions, bacon, and mushrooms together. I can't really describe it, but you just want to dig in the best. I've been sauteing my mushrooms, onions. It's just incredible, incredible smells. And now that the onions are pretty close to translucent, I'm going to add my garlic. Again, I add my garlic towards the end because you want it aromatic, but you don't want it to burn. It's super important. So just keep it stirring, keep it moving. Revel in the aromatics, I'm telling you. This is aromatherapy. You don't need those essential oils. Sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> Cooking is my essential oil. Now that the garlic is happily married with everybody, we're gonna add our Dijon mustard. Add a tablespoon. And then you need a tablespoon of flour. Now, because I'm keto, I can't have flour, so I'm gonna be using xanthan gum. Uh, xanthan gum is a natural thickener. So xanthan gum. But it's, you can't use too much of it, otherwise your sauces are gonna get really strange. They so use very, very small quantities. Let's give it a sprinkle. That Dijon is giving this nice zip. So now that everything's stirred together nicely, we're gonna add our chicken back into the pot. This is a one pot dish, guys. One pot, very, very simple. So I'm adding my chicken and then I'm gonna add it on top. I just had a parent call me while I was cooking dinner, so I don't know if you heard my conversation, but sorry if you did. Anyway, all right, so now I have my chicken in the pot and we're gonna add our liquid. So we need half a cup of chicken broth, and then a cup and a half. And then honestly, we're good. So we're just gonna gently pour it over. Delicious. And you're gonna see it sizzle, because again, it's gonna deglaze the pan in just a little bit. All that stuff on the bottom is gonna come up. So now I'm adding my cup and a half of wine, and I'll pour half a cup for myself. So I'm bringing my uh, broth up to a boil and I'm gonna add my thyme and bay leaf. Absolutely love these things. And then we're gonna add half a cup of cream to give it some richness. And then once we put the stir, we're gonna let it cook for a half an hour and dinner is done. Simple, simple, simple. Rich, delicious. You're gonna love this one. And it's easy cleanup because it's literally just one. As pot. you can see, the liquid is now boiling. So I'm gonna lower it to medium low, about here. Put a lid on it. And in a half an hour, it's so around six o'clock, dinner is ready. The big reveal. Aha, cook oven. 
hot and steamy. Oh. Hello. Guys, you need to make this. French food is so comforting. And now that we're gonna have all these rainy days, it's the perfect time to make something like this. It reminds me of like a fancy pot roast, but with chicken. It has like all that comfort in there. And these keto egg noodles, for those of you that are keto, it mops up the sauce perfectly. And you don't really miss the egg noodle like you would. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love the egg noodle, but this is sufficient. Just the sauce clings onto you. The mushrooms have so much umami. The bacon and the onion just sing harmoniously together. It's the perfect complimented dish. It's simple at the same time. You gotta make it.